Hey YouTubers, hey I wanted to give you guys a uh, update on my system. Um, if you can see I've got wonderful green flashing lights on my battery packs. Um, something I found out recently during some testing and it's only because we've actually had some sunlight is that you can't drain these packs past about 10 volts per pack. Um, I've got these sets of four, sets of four, so they're 48 volts. But what I found is if I try to take them below 10 volts and, uh, and the light doesn't come on as there's no charge, they will not, they're a real pain in the butt to get recharged. You basically have to take the pack apart, hook up a charger to the actual pack itself, not, not through the BMS board. Um, and it basically causes problems. So what I found is as long as I keep these batteries at 10 volts a, a piece, so the max I, dr I drain my system down from 48 volts down to 40, um, and then when, the re when it starts to recharge, they'll actually start taking a charge without any issue. Um, and they stop charging, I want to say, at uh, 4 volts per cell. So they basically stop charging at, uh, what is it, uh, for, it's like 12.6. So they think they stopped charging at actually 12 volts. So basically you get a, you get a two volt window. But because I have my Tesla batteries, my Tesla batteries are a little bit different. Those I can actually drain down farther and they accept more of a charge. So even though these have been, say, charged at 100% to 12 volts per or, yeah 12 volts per cell or 12 volts per pack these batteries will actually charge all the way up to the 50.2 so they do these tesla batteries do give a little bit longer run um, at some point hopefully if i save up enough cash i'm going to take all these packs apart and uh, i'm going to make my own big 48 volt pack and I'll, but I'll probably do it in shelves. So this will be one shelf. This will be another, you know, or this will be one pack. This will be one pack. This will be one pack, and that'll be one pack. Um, I still do. Oh, if you sorry, I had to make some modifications and add a router in here to do some other wiring stuff that I've got going on. I also have my mining rig here. It's a little uh, R9 290 that does like two dollars a day. You know, nothing special, but. Hey, it works. Um, I do have, this is a charger for these, for these uh, battery packs. Um, these will not charge the battery if you're below that 10 volts per cell or 10 volt per pack. Basically it'll come up and basically give it an error. So you ha you'd have to take the pack apart and charge it with like a RC car charger or something. But if you can get it at least to the minimum voltage of 10 volts, this will charge the pack all the way up. There is a 12-volt uh, power supply in the bottom that can provide 15 amps max. And these will basically take like 7 and 7 or 6 and 6, something like that. Um, another thing that I found is to get these lights to activate, the, what I call the charging light, is you need to have almost 3 amps of current... You have to have the right voltage for one, but you have to have almost three amps of current to finally initiate to get them to go. Um, this morning we had a little bit of sun and I was pulling like 15 amps or so and they actually kicked in. Um, that's my Tesla battery or my two Tesla batteries. But the, even though it shows 84 volts, it's because it's actually taking the voltage of both and adding them together just on the display, but the actual voltage going to everything else is 48 volts. It just happens to be the way this BMS works. This is actually the current that's being put back into all my batteries. Um, like I said, we've got a really, now we've got a really foggy day, but even on a foggy day, I'm still putting, you know, 250 watts back into these. I got a couple of other battery monitors here. You know, it's not showing, let's see, it's not showing really any current going in there. And the same thing with with that one. Sorry, this pack, I, I burnt up the, uh, 
or I broke the I broke the casing, so I had to take the casing apart. Um, but just if anybody has you know has these and wants to use them, just know that you really should limit the pack voltage, the individual pack voltage. You know, so this pack, this pack, this pack, and this pack. 10 volts, 10 volts, 10 volts, 10 volts. So I only take this system down to four, or actually 39.5 is where I drop it at. And then the switch, when the 39.5 is hit, that solid state relay shuts off this inverter. And then that inverter in turns <clears throat> will basically stop the charging um, or stop pulling from the batteries. And then, you know, I let these basically kind of sit. And the batteries will come back up a little bit. So even though I drain them down to, to 39.5, um, the, the voltage actually pops back up to about 40.5, 40.8. And then as soon as I start putting that 40 volts, you know, the charger kicks on and it's 40 volts or 41 volts. Yeah, they'll, they'll all start charging. These didn't all kick on at the same time. It all depends on where their charge level is. Like this pat, this set, this set, this set, and this set started flashing first. And then within, you know, a half hour, 45 minutes, the rest of these packs basically all kicked in um, and starting to charge. And I actually monitor them with this, my camera that I, I actually had to move it. So it doesn't get to see all the cameras or all the battery packs, but it does what it does, so. But for anybody, like I said, anybody who wants to, who's looking to use these, just, you know, try to not bring those packs past the 10 volts. So I don't know if you need a, a circuit to do that, you know, maybe a solid state relay, or if you actually have a system that can, uh, can cut off the voltage at, at 10 volts per pack, I would highly recommend it. Hope this helps you guys out. Thanks.